first was Matthew 9, 22. Um, it is the final verse of the story of the woman with the issue of blood who for 12 years had sought healing, sought doctors to, to get cured and didn't, and went into a crowd of people, which was forbidden at that time, and touched the hem of his garment. And the verse says, Jesus turned and saw her, take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you, and the woman was healed from that moment. Part of the script came in two forms. The, the first form is, is in the healing of this gal. And so uh, I thought that the most important part was watching her pursuit towards the healing and uh, trying everything and not working, and then God stepping in and actually doing something, not solving her problem for her, but creating a healing that allowed her to work through her problems. I'm teetering on the fringe. I don't know what else to do. Then I realized to get my healing, the power must come from you. And that's when my character has a realization that there's nothing she can do. No books, no tapes, no anything. Counselors is going to make the difference. Only a touch from God is really what can set her free. As one of the co-writers of the script, I think the writing process went fairly well. Um, the first day we had a script, but then the second day we had a different script. The third day we had a different script. The fourth day we were like, okay, we don't know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> then the fifth day we um, had a good idea of our script. We sat down with a friend of, of Katie Liz, the lead actress, and talked to her friend who actually experienced uh, post-traumatic stress. I think that helped fill in a lot and get a better grounding and a better idea. And then we read through the script and um, we had just made general notations. Uh, we added some of the things that she talked about into the script and I think it gave it that extra level of believability that we may or may not have had before. Your body has these chemicals that are telling you you have to move, and that's what causes the panic. And so during a panic attack, you're supposed to ice right here because it stops those chemicals from flowing. I thought it was fantastic that you guys were doing something on post-traumatic stress disorder because for me, it's, it's, it was so life-altering, and yet people don't really re realize what it is where people think that you're over-exaggerating or you're making it up or, you know, it, it's not really happening. And, and the cool part was that Jim was so into it. He, he's one of the first people I've spoken with who really understood what I was talking about and, and he knew how to incorporate it into the script. For Katie to pull off the part, I really felt that it was important for her to understand that it wasn't a physical role in the sense of you couldn't really act from outside in. It was definitely a, a role where she had to have a very specific incident in her mind that happened so that she could relive it. So I kind of gleaned from her different things that I could use. <laughs> On set this year, I would say it was peaceful. It was, it was really uh, encouraging set and God was definitely there and uh, I'd hate to see it if he wasn't there. It was so much fun to actually go through the shoot. We've had the ability to function as a team more this year under high tense situations. Everybody functioned in unity. We all had the same desires, we all had the same goals and we we knew what our our responsibilities were and we just did it. We had a, a limited crew, so I was actually a very hands-on DP, um, setting lights and kind of gaffing and everything. I had had two crew members, uh, Grip and Gaffer, and uh, they were able to just jump in there and, and really pull through real hard and, and uh, get the shots off that we needed. We shot uh, like four and a half, five pages a day. We had a better set of tools this year in terms of our, our, our training and our development and our honing. Uh, we went into the project with, um, at least we had some storyboards this year. We had a fairly clear idea of what we wanted to do. I think we were overprotective this year. We had the blunder with the blood last year, 
and I just didn't want to use blood in this house this year, but really we needed to. Um, and, and maybe that tentativeness helped us to really stop and think things through. We decided to use an angel this year, so we brought, we brought a gal in, basketball player, nice looking gal, and we set her up in front of what I'm in front of right now, in front of a, the, black, the black screen, lit her up strong, which makes all the background disappear. It gives a real strong contrast, so when I throw a luminance filter on, um, all we see is her. As soon as she touches there, yeah, I want her to go. I want to have a release of energy there or something. Looks like she felt that she had a release of energy. Mm -hmm. You know. And we decided this year that we were going to shoot with a very limited crew um, because we've done that in the past and we've done well together on a, with a limited number of people. So we decided we would give that a shot. Um, plus the fact that we were shooting in a friend's house that was. Um, although it was 3,200 square feet, it, it, was, um, it was liquid gold to us, pure gold, and we wanted to treat it that, well, that way. We didn't want a lot of people there. The more people you have, the more accidents you have. We stayed there overnight. Um, we had lights in every room practically. We were able to shoot on this really great spiral staircase, and um, he's, he's kind of a, a home interior decorator kind of guy, so he really had a a lot of cool uh, artifacts and, and different things laying around the house and, and the house itself had a really nice layout so we were really blessed with uh, natural set dressing if you will. Jim's directing this year was definitely I think all of us from last year's 168 grew leaps and bounds it was like we were a whole different team but Jim's directing especially he had it was a whole nother level the most difficult thing I think for me was actually getting to a point where I could uh, cry in fact. Uh, being, at, being to the emotional level of actually having to cry on camera, that's a very hard thing to do with, you know, the entire crew standing around, the DP, you know what I mean? And he really stepped up to the plate and I think he pleasantly surprised everyone because he hadn't done that level of an emotional role before. I have bruises all over from the stunts and scratches on my back and um, like around my ankle where the bad guy would pull me back away from the gun. I have like bruises all around my ankle from him yanking me back each time. And then of course the scene where I'm flailing about in the closet. I have bruises all over my elbows and knees and legs from hitting the wall and the, and the door. And I think this year on set the presence of God just helped us gel as a team. We joined together as a team in prayer, uh, not just before we started shooting every day, but constantly throughout the day. As things seemed to, to get hard, we'd seek God for answers and solutions to the problems we were having. I think the note said, Final Cut Pro has unexpectedly quit. So, thoughts. First thought is, how long has it been since I last saved? Oh well, <laughs> crank her up again. I go just restart the whole computer. <laughs> so we've come to the realization that we've got to take some, some scenes out. Um, we're going to take all the tape references out. So hopefully that'll buy us some time. Every, you know what? Whoever thought of that 11 minute rule? It's a good idea. That's a good idea. It's a good idea. It probably would have gone longer and it would have been boring. Now it hops. It was painful, but. Hops like a bunny. Oh, I'll flip this switch. See you at the 168.